our entrance into fun this morning is on page 52 of our little missalette, page 52. The Lord heard and had mercy on me. The Lord became my helper. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Show gracious favor, O Lord, we pray, to the works of penance we have begun, that we may have strength to accomplish with sincerity the bodily observances we undertake. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, Cry out, full-throated and unsparingly, lift up your voice like a trumpet blast. Tell my people their wickedness and the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day and desire to know my ways, like a nation that has done what is just and not abandoned the law of their God. They ask me to declare what is due them, pleased to gain access to God. Why do we fast and you do not see it, afflict ourselves and you take no note of it? Lo, on your fast day you carry out your own pursuits and drive all your laborers. Yes, your fast ends in quarreling and fighting, striking with wicked claw. Would that today you might fast so as to make your voice heard on high. Is this the manner of fasting I wish, of keeping a day of penance, that a man bow his head like a reed and lie in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? This, rather, is the fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them and not turning your back on your own. Then, your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. The Word of the Lord. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Amen. 
Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. (laughs) Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) Seek good and not evil, so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. A short reflection with you here on a topic that uh, I'm not really fond of and I'm not very good at either is the topic of fasting, uh, which I know we don't hear a lot about in terms of homilies because it's not exactly the most pleasant thing. But we have uh, both readings have the theme of fasting today because, of course, it's Lent and today is Friday. So it's the first Friday of Lent. Uh, This line here, the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and then they will fast. It doesn't say, and then if they kind of want to, they'll fast or maybe if they get around to it, they'll fast. It actually just says they will do this or if this is a part of following me is fasting. So fasting is really when we deprive ourselves of something really good, uh, something typically like food or a drink, uh, in order to, um, for a greater good, uh, for something even better. So we give up something that's good for something that's even better. Of course, our Lord, and to make more room for the Lord in our life. Uh, If you do it right, fasting uh, disposes you for prayer and for God. Uh, The hunger and and thirst that you feel in your life reminds you that you are frail and weak. I know it does for me. I'm like, how much longer before dinner, Jesus, you know, type of thing. And it humbles you as well. You know, it really does. It humbles you quite a bit. Uh, But it certainly uh, helps you think of the Lord uh, a lot more. So the idea here is that we want to get our lower appetites, we call them sort of the sensual base uh, things within our being, to bring them in line with our spiritual life, to have proper balance. Uh, If somebody never fasts, uh, what ends up happening is you become almost addicted to it and um, your your mind becomes kind of heavy uh, in some sense. Um, So in other words, when you have kind of less food in the belly, uh, there's, it creates more room in the heart, uh, more love in the heart to love our Lord. In terms of uh, biblical understanding, if you think about it, Adam and Eve, uh, they were called to fast from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? To not have everything. So they could focus on the tree of life a little bit more in their life. Jesus, the new Adam, fasted uh, during his 40 days of Lent Uh, in the desert to begin his particular ministry. And when the tempter said, well, you look really hungry. Uh, Those stones, why don't you go ahead and turn those into food, into bread? 
Jesus replied, we do not live by bread alone, reminding us that we live for God. And that's why we fast sometimes. St. Basil, one of the Cappadocian fathers, uh, we celebrate in early January, he said that fasting is the weapon of protection against demons, actually. The devil uh, does not like it when you fast at all. He hates it very much. He does not like a few things in life. He doesn't like it when you pray, and he doesn't like it when you fast. And he also doesn't like it when you do works of uh, service for others as well. I think uh, fasting is, as I said, we commonly uh, associate it with food, but of course it can be sort of broader than that as well, is to give up anything that, in some sense that brings pleasure to you, um, a show or, uh, you know, whatever it is, uh, to, to give up that particular thing, any comfort or enta- entertainment, so that you can be more focused upon our Lord and his kingdom. Just a reminder for us who are Catholics uh, that... Uh, We have abstinence, which is refraining from meat, and we do that on Ash Wednesday and all Fridays uh, in Lent. And really the church recommends that we do that on all Fridays uh, throughout the year, especially during ordinary time. Uh, Fasting is just the one meal a day, a full meal, or two smaller meals, you know, on on two smaller meals aside. Really no snacking uh, when you're fasting is kind of a big no-no. So today, uh, we take our first day in some sense of kind of cutting back on some of the pleasures of life so that we can be more focused upon our Lord Jesus and more focused on the corporal works of mercy, which we hear in that first reading from the prophet Isaiah. My brothers and sisters, now we stand in confidence and we turn to our Heavenly Father with all of our prayers. For the whole church, on this day of special penance and fasting, that our poor brothers and sisters may benefit from our self-denial as we share their daily portion. We pray to the Lord that Christians may take the lead in setting free the oppressed, releasing those bound unjustly and sheltering the homeless so that there may be peace. We pray to the Lord that we may humbly admit our sinfulness and be given the great grace of a deep conversion to God during this holy season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all who are suffering in body and soul, especially those who have asked us to pray for them, that the inner bonds that affect them may be broken and their wounds healed. We pray to the Lord Lord, for our beloved dead, that their time of purification may be shortened, and they may reject the bridegroom at the wedding, and they may rejoin the bridegroom at the wedding banquet of heaven. We pray to the Lord Lord, and for peace in our country, for which this Mass is offered, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their heart, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer, O Lord, the sacrifice of our Lenten observance, praying that it may make our intentions acceptable to you and add to our powers of self-restraint. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, Andrew his assistant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. <clears throat> Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Oh Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that through partaking of this mystery, we may be cleansed of all our misdeeds and so be suited for the remedies of your compassion. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Over to my left and your right there, we've got the first uh, niche there. They're starting to light up, so they'll be working on all that next week, all the niches and stuff, and then installing the stations that we do have. So it's coming. We're getting there. Just it takes time. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. For your mighty deeds, O God of mercy, may your people offer endless thanks. And by observing the age-old disciplines along their pilgrim journey, may they merit to come and behold you forever through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael.